Hey all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about how to enter into VLSI field and what are the things that are there in front end of VLSI and back end of VLSI and what is the course structure of uh, design and verification domain, what are the courses that you need to learn in design and verification domain in order to enter into DV domain. So all these things we are going to discuss in this video. Actually I have made this type of video in the past also like uh, of almost four months of back maybe that is my first video of the when I started the YouTube channel but recently many of you are uh, who are like second and third year students of uh, engineering many of you are asking me to make a video on this particular thing so in order to clear all your doubts on how to enter into this VLSI domain there are many VLSI enthusiasts who wants to know how to enter into this domain and what are the courses we need to learn apart from the um, engineering courses that you already learned in during your engineering so all these things we are going to discuss in this today's video so if you are new to this channel consider subscribing this channel and hit on the notification bell also also do check the full length video in order to know entire things about VLSI uh, what is VLSI basically every one of you know like VLSI is nothing but it's a very large scale integration and it's basically a process in order to create an IC that's it we can say that it's basically in order to create an IC it's IC nothing but integrated circuit okay that means what we are doing here we are designing a chip so in order to design a chip what all the process that is undergone in order to design this chip will be the uh, path for the VLSI okay so basically uh, as i already told you vls is nothing but we are going to design a integrated circuit so in order to design this vlsi like as a, as i already told you in order to design this chip we will be undergoing some process and this process makes you learn what uh, what are the languages that we need to learn in order to enter into this like in order to know about this VLSI design process okay so before going into that so basically VLSI when coming to VLSI design process it is having some like various design flow steps so one is defining and then after defining the IC, after defining the requirements for IC, we will be developing that and then we will be detailing the design and then comes verification and then comes fabrication. Okay, so this is the VLSI design process. Okay, so when coming to defining, defining is nothing but for every IC, like for every design, for every integrated circuit, for every chip we are designing, every chip is uh, different in nature like we don't need all the chips for one reason is it or not is it or not so basically when it comes to integrated like VLSI it's nothing but chips so VLSI is everywhere in our present days like all the electronic devices that you are using are based on this chips so we can't make one chip for everything is it or not we can't make one chip to work for our, uh, every process so based on the requirements and based on the need of the customer this particular designing of the chip will be varying so first comes the defining that means de defining the requirements when we are going to design a chip we will be defining like what are the requirements we want in order to design that particular chip so basically in technical language we will be calling them as specifications specifications is nothing but like uh, when you are going to design an IC what are the requirements that you need for that particular IC what is the work that the chip is going to do so these all come under the defining section and then after defining after uh, you knowing clarity after you getting clarity about what are the requirements that you need in order to define in order to design the chip then what you will do you will be developing a high level design developing the high level design is nothing but you will be 
developing program code for that okay that means you will be writing the code for that particular another means this comes under the software section like you will be writing the hardware code you will be writing the code for that particular ic okay this come under developing and then after developing detailing the design after developing the uh, like after uh, writing the code and then you will be detailing it like what is what what is what you will be detailing and then after detailing comes the verification this is the most important step we could say because after writing the code and after uh, like placing every uh, like after uh, uh, compiling it and all then what happens then it comes for the verification part verification part is where uh, what what the verification engineer basically does is after writing the code and thing you need to verify whether your chip is working properly or not before getting it before manufacturing it or before making it out of out from the factory you need to uh, verify the design so this verification there comes this verification and in this verification if you find any bugs it will again go for developing and then detailing and then verify so this is just a loop process until your chip is bug free these are the three things that is that will be followed in a loop and then after verification is done then comes the fabrication fabrication is nothing but the hardware that means the chip in your hand is nothing but fabricated ic okay so this is how the vlsi design process takes like uh, the size of the circuits are reduced and the higher device reliability and it requires less power and uh, coming to the cost effectiveness also uh, it's much more less okay so these are some of the advantages i hope you already know about this advantages in vlsi technology and this entire steps entire flow is again categorized into two parts so there it goes it is front end and back end okay so you need to know in which area you are interested in in, uh, in vlsi so basically in vlsi um, uh, it is categorized into two parts like front end and back end okay so when coming to front end front end is nothing but everything from specification to verification okay that means the coding and then designing the code and uh, i'm sorry i mean writing the code and simulating the code and verifying the code so all this will be going under the front end of the vlsi that means the front end team of the vlsi are those who will be doing these things and then coming to physical design and manufacturing this comes under the back end session okay so that is the difference between front end and back end in vlsi generally in uh, your language that means simply speaking we can call it as uh, if you are into coding that means if you like coding and if you are uh, if you really want to be in coding then front end is very uh, better for you but you are into like a hardware session like if you want to uh, in uh, designing the chip and all then you should go to the fabricator that means you are into like hardware process then it goes to back end okay so again in vlsi basically these two are very this is very important that means this is the field where you are going to choose like either it is front end or back end so uh, like uh, in this channel i am going to cover everything about front end of vlsi okay so how should what are the opportunities that are there in the front end and what are the courses that you need to learn in the front end so these all the things that i am going to cover in my channel so in vlsi i am going to tell you all about the front end of vlsi okay so as i see as i already told you front end is nothing but designing and testing that means whatever uh, I see you want to design for that entire I see you will be writing the code and checking verifying that code in case of front end and then after this process of uh, designing and testing is done then it goes to back end for manufacturing okay so basically this is the thing that is being done and when coming to the opportunity so I already told you like what are the um, things like what are the 
uh, opportunities that you are going to get that when you are a front end engineer and when you are a back end engineer so basically these are the designations for the persons who are from the front end engineer like if you see here you can be either rtl design engineer or ip design engineer or rtl integration engineer or verification okay pre silicon validation and prototyping engineer or emulation dft formal verification post silicon validation engineer so these are various uh, you could say that these are the various opportunities or these are the various designations you can get when you are going to be a front end engineer and then coming to back end when you are a back end one like when you are a back end when you want to into hardware and when you want to be a back end engineer so then also you are having these opportunities like you can be either pd engineer nothing but physical design engineer or you can be a synthesis or sta physical verification engineer layout design engineer and analog mix uh, circuit design engineer okay so these are the various opportunities in both front end as well as back end okay so when coming to as i already told you in this channel i am going to tell you about front end so when coming to front end of the uh, like when you are a front end when you want to become a front end vls engineer as i already told you front end is nothing but completely uh, uh, have coding okay so for that coding for any coding i think you already know because basically when you are engineer and when you are into coding you need to learn some languages in order to enter into that particular uh, field so in this front end in order to enter into the front end uh, field you need to learn certain languages so among them these are the two languages and when methodology so one is verilog hdl okay it's nothing but verilog verilog is one of the language you need to learn and then comes system verilog and then comes uvm uvm is not a language basically so like uh, combiningly both uh, using this verilog and system verilog knowledge you will be putting that knowledge into the uh like uh, action that is um, basically the uvm uvm is universal verification methodology so in my channel i am going to cover all these languages like i am going to tell you all the languages on verilog system verilog as well as universal verification methodology and then also i am going to explain you some mini project on like apb you will be having them okay apb hp and all so this uh, so my main motto in this channel is to cover everything that is related to front end vlsa so now coming to the core structure of this particular languages that we have mentioned before like verilog and system verilog so before learning into verilog and system verilog you have to know about digital electronics you will be having this digital electronics course while you are learning in engineering like either it is digital system design or digital electronics both are same so in digital electronics you have to be aware of this following things okay like firstly you have to be how you have to have complete grip on combinational and sequential circuits so within a combinational and sequential circuits these are the things you will be coming under like adders subtractors encoders decoders multiplexers all this come under combinational logics okay and then coming to flip flop synchronous circuits okay counters registers so these all come under the sequential uh, uh, logic okay and then memory and pla right now coming to the verilog language so in verilog language these are the concept you have to be learning when you are doing your course in verilog okay you have to know about the verilog basics and the verilog constructs like data types you have to be fully aware of data types okay arrays operators and tasks and functions modules and ports and also you should be aware of assignments like there are two kinds of assignments in verilog like continuous and procedural assignments and the most important thing is in order to write your code in verilog you have to be aware of this four modeling uh, four modeling structures like data flow modeling behavioral modeling gate level modeling and switch level modeling okay switch level modeling is not that important in verilog but mostly you should be aware of these three modeling styles one is data flow behavioral and then gate level modeling and you should be aware of writing the codes in all these 
modeling styles and also you should be aware of FSM okay finite state machines compiler directives very log timing regions okay and you should be aware of system task usages like dollar display dollar monitor dollar strobe and dollar write so these are the things you will be learning when you are learning about the very log course okay and then coming to the system very log course when you are learning about system very log course you should be aware of these these are this is the core structure of system very log course okay uh, that is system very log introduction and then operators data types these are already present in very log but you they will be coming in system very log they are advancements in system very log okay and then you will be aware of procedural statements tasks and functions and then coming to process and the one most important thing in system very log is oops concept okay you should be fully aware of this oops concept and then there are many advancements in system very log like constraints randomization inter process communication assertion so these are the advancements in system very log when uh, then coming to that of Verilog okay and then coverage okay so these are the all the things that you should be aware of when you are learning about the system Verilog course okay and then coming to UVM construct so UVM is a methodology so you need to know this uh, why do we are using this UVM methodology and uh, how this UVM is derived from various things like OVM, AVM and all and UVM basics and you have to know about the test bench hierarchy of this UVM okay and then sequences, sequences, okay configurations and also you should be the most frequently asked in UVM is about the UVM phases okay and also you should be aware of how to write a code on different test bench components like you have to know how to write a code in monitor driver agent coverage scoreboard so all these things you have to be aware of and you should also learn about TLM ports which is a must and should in case of UVM okay so these are all the concepts that you need to learn while you are learning while you want to enter into design and verification domain in VLSA okay so this is the core structure of this particular very log and system very log course okay and also i have made a full length video on very log on co uh, covering all the very log concepts like i uh, have covered all these concepts within these things and then now what i am doing is i'll be linking that in the description box you can go there and check it out and then okay this is all about the introduction of this entire TV course so if you are new to this channel again I'm telling it consider subscribing this channel and hit on the notification bell also I have made the videos on every topic of this in detail okay I link that playlist like I have created a separate playlist for very log as well as system very log you can go there and check it out for every concept in detail I have made a clear explanation on that and also if you are having any doubts you can uh, ping me in my uh, youtube channel or you can ping me you can join my telegram channel and if you have any doubts you can ping me there or you can also follow me on linkedin where i'll be uploading every ppts of this particular thing because recently many of you are asking that uh, if i can provide the powerpoint presentations or notes on this particular channel so that is why you can join my telegram channel for that or i'll be uploading every day regularly updates in my linkedin so you can follow me on linkedin also so that is all for today thank you all